are you too late to switch your career to the cloud? If you are in your 30s, 40s or 50s, can you still change your career to the cloud? Yes, but you need to do certain things. In today's video, I'm going to go over a data-driven approach to switch your career at any age to the cloud. How do I know all about this? Well, for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. I was stuck long time in legacy technology mainframes. At mid-30s, I switched my career from mainframe to the cloud. At age 38 and a half, I got into AWS as senior solutions architect. At my early 40s, I delivered world-scale lighthouse projects that went on to become official AWS reference. I talked all over the world at major conferences. And at age 42, I got promoted to L7 principal solutions architect at AWS. And at age 45, I left Amazon to start my own startup. And this is the part I am most proud about. I have helped many students to switch their career into cloud. And these students come from different backgrounds. Software developer, QA, database admin, data engineer, manager, program manager, etc. Most of them are mid-30s, early 40s, mid-40s, and some of them are even 50s. So you could see this is totally possible. And today I'm going to share the exact framework that I use with them with you guys and girls. So this video is not going to be like, let's go do it kind of thing, because then it means nothing, right? So I'm going to show you some actionable path and I'm going to show you the framework. Okay, let's get into it. So if you're watching this video, highly likely that your current situation looks like this. So there is some technology which you are good at, right? And you also get paid for it, right? But the problem is you don't love it, right? So let me give you an example. So I was in mainframe for a very long time and I was really good at mainframe and I was getting paid for it. But I wanted to switch. I, I loved cloud, I loved DevOps and all the new stuff. And I knew mainframe was going nowhere. And there was very little overlap between what you love and what you are good at and what you get paid for. And to be clear, none of this is your fault, right? When I joined IT, they just put me on mainframe because I did not come from computer science. I did not know coding. So highly possible, most of you are in that boat as well. When you started your career five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years back, you had no idea. Someone just assigned you that and you didn't know how that's going to go. You didn't know there will be AWS, there will be cloud, there will be Gen AI, DevOps, etc. And you thought, look, I'm just going to work hard and I'm sure things will be good. But unfortunately, that's not how it went for me. And then what you love, the world has high demand for, right? Like you, you love cloud, possibly you are getting into Gen AI, and the world has high demand for it. And there is a high overlap. However, there is this gap, right? And if, if you are in your 30s or 40s or 50s, you think, how am I going to cross this gap to go from here to here? Okay. So now let's tackle the sensitive topic of age. So when it comes to age, your workplace age is different than the biological age. And I'll give you an example. A lot of you know I'm very good friends with Ethan Evans. When you see Ethan Evans talk or give presentation or do a podcast with me, do you ever think he's old? Or you feel like, man, he has so many good ideas. I would love to know him, I would love to be mentored by him. Why? Because workplace age is related to certain negative and positive qualities. Even if you are a biologically young person, but if you are resistant to change and you are just coasting at the workplace and you have no passion, you will be perceived as an old person at the workplace. And many times I have seen those person stuck at their career or even get fired. Even if you are biologically a little bit older, but you are open to learning new technologies and you jump in to deliver projects and you always go above and beyond and you are excited about new innovations, you collaborate with others, you are perceived as a young person at the workplace. So workplace age is not a number, but a mindset. And you have a proof right in front of you. As I told you, all my big transformation happens 
at late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s. And I'm gonna switch real quick to my uh, students, right? And you could see some of them give me testimonials. A lot of them are actually mid 40s. Sorry, Manoj, to give it up. So Manoj is actually in his 50s and he successfully switched his career to AWS. And Ethan Evans, he's actually almost 56. Did you guess his age? Or you thought he is a young chap? All right, now that we tackled the age component, let's take a look at a ideal situation. So this is the ideal situation. You are good at the cloud and you love cloud. The world has high demand for it and you get well paid for it, right? Because if you're switching your careers at 30s, 40s or 50s, you don't want to go back in salary. You should be well compensated for it. Okay, now here is the mistake everyone does, right? And most of my students, when they come to me, they also have done this mistake. And I also have done this mistake. And this is the reason the switch doesn't happen or you fail at the transition. Okay, so you have to think what you can be good at. What, what does that mean? Okay, I'll give an example. So when I was trying to switch from mainframe, I looked up all the high paying career and I saw data scientist pays a lot of money. I tried to switch to data scientist, but I failed. Why? Because I cannot reuse any of my mainframe experience to become a data scientist. So you must utilize your existing experience for the switch. Do not think your existing experience is throwaway. You will have certain components of your current expertise that you can reuse for your switch. Let me give an example. So when I was in mainframe, I was dealing with DB2 databases. So I knew SQL. I also knew how to cost optimize the COBOL programs, which have been using these SQL databases. Guess what? That principle remains exactly same in the cloud. So I showcased how did I cost optimize SQL queries. As part of mainframe, I was exporting and importing data into the tables. So I learned the equivalent part on AWS, how to migrate data from one premises to the AWS RDS databases. I was writing a lot of JCL jobs which run batch programs. And I mapped that to the equivalent cron job on AWS and later on step functions. You see, I'm not learning AWS in vacuum. I am mapping my existing experience to the AWS components. I'll give another example. So I have a student who was a database admin. So he already knew a lot about SQL versus NoSQL, on-prem databases, how to uh, load data, how to optimize query, how to cost optimize, all that stuff. So once he learned the equivalent components on AWS, like RDS and DynamoDB, the differences and how to migrate the data from SQL databases on-prem to RDS MySQL, that's it. Then he can bridge the gap, right? Then he can connect the experiences. So think about your current expertise and what part you can map it to the cloud component. And it is always possible. And my students and me are proof of it. Like, Rukmani got into AWS as solutions architect and she was a software developer. Giovanni got double solutions architect jobs from DevOps. Sungjin got SA job from on-prem developer. Arnav got into Microsoft as senior SA from developer. Chandra became solutions architect from program manager slash delivery manager, right? Mamiya became SA from healthcare. And I have plenty of examples like that. So it is totally possible. On that note, if you want to get personally mentored by me and get a little bit more customized help and learn about the relevant technical, behavioral, hands-on, along with LinkedIn, resume improvement and mock interviews, check out sabootcamp.com. I run only three cohorts in one year with limited number of students. The seats generally sell out within a day. So the next cohort is launching early January. So wait list in sabootcamp.com to get more details. All right, back to the video. And here's the thing. If you are 30s or 40s or even 50s, you have decades left in your career. So don't think you are running out of time. And the good news is you already have a job, right? So even if you try something and it doesn't work out, it's okay. 
you still have a safety net. You want to use the time and it is always better to be a beginner in a growing field than an expert in a dying one. Because when you are 70 and 80 year old, you don't want to have regret that, what if I just tried it, right? So here are the actionable steps for you in this new year. Difference between your best version and your current version is skills. However, leverage existing skills to bridge the gap. Think about what part of your current job can be reused to make the switch. Maybe you, you are already a tech lead. Maybe you are an on-prem architect. Maybe you are doing some projects that has equivalent components on the cloud. Reuse all of it. Age is not a factor. Your actions are. The more actions you take, better your chances of switching. And actions lead to outcomes. On that note, I cannot wait to hear your success stories. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this. Keep learning and keep rocking.